Hi, this is Sebastian from Sitecore. Today, I would like to introduce you to the Content and Media Upload API of Content Hub One. This helps you perform CRUD operations, meaning create, read, update, or delete for content types, API keys, users, and content media items. We are going through a lot of examples so you understand how this helps you in your daily business. Content Hub One offers several APIs to manage or consume content. We have the Delivery API where you can query published content using the GraphQL endpoint of the scaled edge delivery layer that is ready for public. The Preview API makes content already available before it gets published. Here you can query the GraphQL endpoint of the Content Hub One authoring environment to preview content. This API is not meant to show content publicly. The Content Management API allows to manage the content through the API instead of the UI. This can be useful when automating content processing or importing and exporting content. The Media Upload API can be used to upload and manage assets. You have access to all kinds of entities with Content Hub 1 such as content items of all types, users, API keys, media items and content types itself. In today's video, we want to utilize the Content Management API to create a new content type called Products. Based on this new content type, we want to create an Apple product and a Pear product as content. So let's go through it one by one. I'm using Postman for this demo. There's also a Swagger API version of all available calls. In Postman, I prepared my Postman collection of API calls. But before we go through those, I show you around my setup in here. On the one hand, I have an environment called ch1prod. In here, I store the client ID and the client secret. The client secret and client ID you can find in your Content Hub 1 instance under Settings and OAuth Client. On my collection, I created variables for my authentication URL and the Content Management API URL, so I don't have to type them over and over again and I'm able to use tokens instead. In order to authenticate with the Content Management API of Content Hub 1, I need to authorize myself. Therefore, I'm calling the authentication URL endpoint to get a bearer token that I need to interact with the Content Management API. I need to pass in the grant type, client ID and client secret, which I get from the environment setup and the audience. When I send this POST request correctly, the HTTP response code is 200 and I receive the access token in the response body. This token I copy into my collection authorization as bearer token. As all my API calls inherit from this authentication from the collection, I don't have to provide the token each time I'm making a call. Now that I'm authenticated against Content Hub 1, let me create the content type products. In the headers of my post request to the content types endpoint, I need to pass the content type and accept header. In the body of my request, I define the ID and the name of the new content type, in my case, products, and all its fields specifying the field types and if the fields are required or not. So the product name as short text, the product description as long text, the product quantity as an integer, that maps to the number field in the UI, the product image as a media field, and the product price as a short text. Sending the query correctly, I receive a response with the HTTP response code 200, confirming the creation of the content type by showing all of its details in the response body. As we can see, there is also a field named help text available on each field, which we have not specified so far. Let's see if we can also get the new content type. For that get request, we need to pass the content type ID as a query path parameter. The ID of the new content type is products. As request header, I pass the accept header and my request body stays empty. In the response body, I can see all details about my new product's content type. Now I can create a content item of type products using the content items endpoint. 
I need to pass the content type and accept headers and all details about the content item. The item ID and name will be Apple. Additionally, I provide the product name with a value and type attribute. Same for the description and the quantity. As the product image is a media field, I need to pass the type link, related type media, ID of the media item I want to reference, and the URI of the media endpoint using also the media item ID. The ID of the media item you can receive through the GET request of the Content Media Endpoint of the Content Hub 1 API or through the Content Hub 1 application. Not to forget the price. When sending the request, I receive an HTTP response code 201 with confirmation in the response body showing the current content item. Let's send a GET request to view the Apple product. We can request a single content item by content item ID. The header and body can stay empty. But as mentioned, we pass in a UL path parameter content item ID using the ID of the desired product, in my case, Apple. We can also request a list of content items. The page size and page number UL parameters are mandatory and need to contain a value bigger than zero, otherwise you will get an HTTP 400 bad request. Additionally, you can query items of a certain content type using the system content type ID parameter. You can query for the item name, run a free text search using the search parameter or sort by any of the standard fields of a content type. You have to pass the accept headers and leave the request body empty. As a response, I get the list of products with the name Apple sorted by name. We receive one result as I have created only one product so far. The content type products currently consists of the fields product name, product description, quantity, product image and price. Let's add a new field to reference related products. So a reference field that references content items. When sending the put request, we have to pass the content type ID, path parameter and content type and accept headers. In the body, we define the whole content type with all its property values for the name and description, but also all fields we have already created. This way, the update can also take care about removing existing fields or property values. Additionally, we add the field with the ID and name related products. As we got a status code 200, let's check the result in the Content of One app. We can see a new field is available now and we can assign any kind of content items. In the future, you will be able to restrict the content types which are shown here. This would be useful for us as well as we only want to show related items of type products. So far we've worked with already existing images, but what if we want to upload them using the Media Upload API? This is very well documented on docs.sidecore.com. The flow of uploading images is creating an upload link, upload the asset using the upload link and completing the upload. Last but not least, we have to create a media item to actually use that image later on with the content. To create an upload link, I run a post request against the media management system upload API. The URL for that is mmsupload.sidecorecloud.io API media v1 upload link generate. I've added the domain to my collection variables. I add the headers for the XMMS content type, which specifies the content type of the file I'm going to upload. Currently, Content Hub 1 supports the following content types. Image JPEG, Image PNG, Image GIF and Image WebPack. The XMMS content length specifies the maximum content length in bytes. The max file size is 70 megabytes. Not to forget the content type header that needs to be set to application JSON. As body, I specify the file name. When I send the request, I receive the link which I need to upload the actual file. The URL expires at a certain point of time. 
Additionally, I get the file ID, which I need for my further request as well. To upload the asset, I need to send a put request using the URL given by the last response. As this request does not require authorization, I need to set it to no auth. I set content type and application headers to application JSON, and in the body, I select the binary, meaning the file I want to upload. I receive an HTTP 201, so the file is uploaded. Now I need to complete the upload by sending a request to the upload link complete endpoint. This requires the XMMS content type and XMMS content length header again as well as the content type. In the body I pass the file ID that I got from the generate upload link response. The completion is confirmed with an HTTP 201 and file ID. To actually use the image later on with my content, I need to create a media item now. In the headers, I set the content type and accept. In the body, I specify the ID of the media item, the name of the media item, the description, and the file ID. Now that my media item is created, let's search for it. I can either get a list of media items or just request a single media item by ID. Let's do that for now. I pass the media item ID as a URL path parameter. In my case, that's pair. I've set the accept header and left the body blank. The request returned the newly created media item. Maybe we are not happy with the description, so we use the put request on the media endpoint where we also pass the media item ID as a UL path parameter and the whole set of properties of the media item in the body. The ID, the name, the description, and the file ID. Send it and the media item has been updated. As everything is set for the media item, I want to publish it so whenever I use the media item in my content, it's available through the media and content delivery API. Beside the content and media items, we can also manage API keys. We can get a list of API keys. The API key itself is not shown, but a hash. The hash is further on used to identify the API key when updating or deleting it. Let's create a new API key. Similar to the app, we need to pass the name of the API key and the type. The type can be preview or delivery, depending on what API the key is for. We get the API key in the response, this is the only time the key is shown. To update the API key, we need the hash. So let's check with the list of keys. Copy it. We can change the name of the API key if we need to. Therefore, we provide the hash and pass the new name in the body. Fine. Using the users endpoint, we can get a list of users that have logged into Content Hub 1 so far. As you can see, the Content Management and Media Upload API is a very powerful tool when it comes to importing or exporting content or adding content automations, for example, using Azure Functions. I hope this video was valuable for you. See you next time.